Hello everyone, good evening. So uh, welcome to the future of a live music in lockdown panel discussion. I have a glittering array of guests with me tonight for the next hour. Um, who will be answering some questions from you guys and talking about um, this um, very difficult time that we find ourselves in as a sector, as someone described it today, a corona coaster. Um, it's been uh, extremely difficult, but hopefully we can find some kind of way through. So I'm absolutely delighted um, to welcome our guest tonight. We have Sir Richard Lees, the leader of Manchester City Council with us. We have Sasha Lord, who's uh, the Greater Manchester Nighttime Economy Advisor, founder of Park Life and Warehouse Project, and of course, GM's United We Stream. We have Michelle Kuypers, who's North Sea Jazz Festival Programme Manager. We have Raina Connolly, singer and musician with Honeyfeet, The Breath and many other um, bands. And we have um, Yemi Bolatiwa, who is a Manchester-based uh, singer-songwriter. Um, so welcome everybody. It's absolutely lovely to have you all here with us tonight. Um, so, well, we're in extremely strange times, you know, and Manchester Jazz Festival should have been, um, you know, celebrating its 25th anniversary with all of our partner venues in the city, our amazing outdoor stages, our food and drink offer and, you know, celebrating our 25th year. And instead, um, we've uh, we decided very quickly to move all of, of virtually all of our content um, online, which has been challenging and wonderful in uh, equal measure. Um, so it's, as I said, it's a very um, unprecedented time for the whole sector. And I wanted to kind of start with uh, Yemi and, and Raina, really, by thinking about, you know, as artists yourselves, what, um, what was that, what was it like at first when we first went into lockdown and, you, you know, that realisation that, you know, in terms of gigging, that's just not going to be possible. And so how did you respond um, as artists yourselves? Raina, let's come to you first. Um, well, I think after the dust settled, um, it was sheer panic, yeah. to be honest, because um, we were on our way to, I think, Dublin the day after, and uh, the very first show um, said um, that they were going to have to shut it down because the Irish government had um, been very clever <laughs> and um but they had um decided to pay everybody anyway mm -hmm. so it was kind of a breath of fresh air what happened in the weeks after that was was uh, kind of heart-wrenching because everything nothing was cancelled everything was rescheduled yeah. and so there's no way of recouping that so um yeah it was blind panic yeah uh, for, for me especially because i am um, had us well i have a small baby and i was just getting back on the road with her and i had everything in place i had um quite a lot in place so um yeah it was um yeah it was just, yeah i don't want to use any expletives but there was shit in her flying <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what about yourself, Yemi? Um, for me, it was kind of strange. It was different because um, I kind of thought, okay, well, I'm just going to start doing some online gigs now and just kind of jumped into it and did like a couple of Sunday sessions, which were actually quite nice and well engaged. But both times I did it, I had this weird feeling afterwards when I was done, when I was just sat in my living room on my own thinking, Oh wow, this is weird. I'm I'm gonna miss seeing. I didn't I didn't realise it could ever get taken away from me. And even this online thing is nice, but it's it's not the same. Um, and I've definitely kind of gone from okay, stop trying to do live things. Maybe you know keep it for the social side. And I've been doing more recording at home mm -hmm. and things like that. And I've just kind of accepted that the stage is somewhere that I'm not gonna not gonna see for a long time. So vocal work and and collaborations with producers is kind of where my head's gone to and I'm lucky because I've got a part-time charity job that they have kept me on doing that online engagement work for kids and stuff so as much as I lost half of my income um I could still pay my, my, my to pay my rent my house bill so I was very fortunate in that way um despite the the rest of the losses so was that an immediate decision that sort of oh well let's do this online was it kind of straight away that you thought 
Pretty much, yeah. I think I, I only really know like productive demos. I'm like, okay, let's do it. But then at the same time, I've kind of felt after a couple of weeks, I've rushed into that a little bit. I'm just going to sit back and maybe just absorb what's going on for a moment. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Michelle, as a festival programmer, I mean, how was that for you? You know, planning North Sea Jazz, which is such a you know high profile and well known um, jazz festival. Um, how has it been for you in the last few weeks? It has been most of all. It has been very very strange because at the beginning, everybody was thinking or maybe hoping that it would be for a few weeks, so nobody knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, then we. We're postponing a lot. I'm not only working for the for the North Sea Jazz Festival. I work for some smaller festivals as well. One of which is Transition, which took place in beginning of April, and we do a lot of shows in the clubs as well. So we started what was already mentioned with postponing and rescheduling, hoping that you know it would take off again. Um, and then there was this long uncertainty because we could feel that was speaking of for, for the North Sea Jazz Festival, we could feel that it was not going to happen this summer, but it was not officially said. The government was still like, well, that they didn't know. So we were still preparing a festival that we in our hearts already felt that was going to be very unlikely to happen. So that was a very weird situation. Um, but we've mainly been postponing. Actually also the, the North Sea for this summer has been canceled. Mm. So we're now working or start start to work on the edition of 221 and we're discussing something if we can do something during the weekend but it, it it's impossible to do something that is similar to the festival we can't do that online mm -hmm. yeah and um so richard and sasha you know manchester's known for kind of pushing the envelope in a whole range of ways and you know responding to difficulty with creativity and resilience so i wondered if you could kind of talk through the whole the process of really of how you got to gm stream and you thought about united we stream as a, a possibility and now it's become the you know a phenomenon that it has i wondered if you could um talk us through that and, and what, how, what that journey's been like do you want me to, to go on that so um yeah i'm in, in a whatsapp group of uh, almost other night advisors across the world from Australia, India, Lithuania, the States. Um, and I saw something happen in Berlin just as lockdown was being spoken about. And I think everybody knows that if you live in Berlin from the age of being in, in a nappy to the age of going into a coffee and you're into techno music, there's nothing else that goes on there. So all their techno clubs closed down and they put a, a, a DJ in a club called Bergein um, and they streamed it and he said to people, look, so many people have fallen through the gap. So many grassroots artists and venues, they've no help from the government. So it's free to watch this entertainment, but if you can donate one euro, to two euros, please do. And I thought that was really impressive. So I phoned them up on the Monday and said, look, can we nick it for Greater Manchester? And he said, yes, and they supported it. Um, and, you know, it's been, it's been incredible. We're eight weeks in now. Um, we didn't know much, never mind donate. But we've now had over 12 million uh, engagements and we raised a third of a million pounds and you know applications are going out to help people right across the whole of the city regions it's been a, a phenomenal success mm. and have we been more successful than berlin we have of course great <laughs> Manchester is always more successful than anywhere that's yeah, really wasn't it yeah <laughs> And Richard, from your perspective, you know, uh, Manchester's kind of response to this in terms of, you know, how we, the initial, initial response and then thinking about how we can get back on our feet in terms of arts and culture. What's your um, current um, thinking or your current views on this situation we're in? Well, I, I think I've got two views. One's a personal uh, view of all the gigs I was going to go to that have been yeah. cancelled, uh, which... So really upset from uh, uh, from that point of view. I was trying to work out what the last gig I went to. I think it was Big Thief, but probably at Albert uh, Albert Hall. But I know that there are all sorts I was got planned that I can't uh, can't go to. But uh, actually, uh, culture generally, music in particular, are absolutely fundamental. Not just to the economy of. Uh, Manchester, but also to the quality of life within the city, you know, uh, how, how we live our lives. And uh, I, th I think what people are doing in the digital sphere is absolutely uh, phenomenal to, to kind of keep it going. But look, we all know 
It's like I've been working from home for two months now and it's completely doing my head in. And it's the same with music. It's just not the same if you're not with the artist, if you're not with the audience and, and so on. And the real challenge to us is how we get back to uh, uh, that and get back to that experience. Because it, it, I've gone through, you know, I've been listening to uh, uh, stream gigs, uh, larger historic gigs and so on, and it is just not uh, just not the same. Uh, how we're going to do that, I think it's going to be really, really difficult. I think uh, uh, it's pity about the Jazz Festival, not least source of its outdoors. And I think outdoors will come back quicker than uh, uh, indoors. So uh, hopefully over the summer when the weather's, uh, weather's decent, I suspect that sit downs will come back faster than uh, uh, stand ups, which is a little bit of a uh, shame because clearly uh, social distancing, uh, at least to a certain extent in sit downs is uh, easier uh, than that. But basically uh, at some point we have to be able to recreate the experience in being a, in a sweaty room full of other people listening to uh, some great music because that's ultimately what, what, what it's about. Uh, I think the challenge to us all really, of course, uh, and it's getting more and more difficult every day, is that really it is to maintain the discipline to be able to bring the virus under control that allows us get uh, to get back to a position where, where we can do that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's um, well, difficult, isn't it, in all kinds of ways at yeah. the moment. Well, let's, I'm just thinking about that, you know, the effects on audiences and the kind of connection or lack of connection. So, you know, there's a lot of stream gigs going on. Do you think that, um, this is a question for, for anyone really on the panel, um, do you think audiences are going to continue to kind of um, consume live music online for the foreseeable? Do you think that it is? And, and also thinking about whether um, they will continue to support if uh, we have to kind of charge and we have to, you know, there's a paywall to watch a gig. Do you think that's going to be the next step or do you think people will just kind of, it'll fade off? Raina. So... There, there's been quite a few options uh, thrown up to us, um, depending on, on what kind of a band outfit we have. Like there are, there are some amazing venues in Manchester that are offering a socially distant performance, um, to, like recorded and then being pumped out in something called Switch, which is usually a gamers platform and you can actually charge people to come into what essentially is a forum or chat room and um yeah that's a bit sci-fi for me <laughs> and I'm feeling my way around that idea but you know um I'm I'm kind of grassroots in it a wee bit where we're I've got a ramshackle set up every Sunday like you Yemi and uh, Sunday afternoons or evenings um with my with my baby by a fireside and I'm just um, keeping the wall from the door, like with my family giving me uh, loads of abuse online and I sing for them. And that's basically just to keep my grandparents happy and loads of people who would have come to see the gig were trying to get them to not cancel their tickets, uh, just to hold on until everything's rescheduled. And that's okay for one of the for one of the bands at Honeyfeet, another of the bands, um, The Breath, um, all, of our, all of our gigs have been set back. So there's going to be maybe like oh, a six month delay in, you know, the touring schedule, mm. maybe an 18 month delay in album release, things like that. We're just looking for delays. But for now, I'm actually feeling closer to a lot of um, my audience. Got about fifteen or sixteen thousand views every week. I've got set up a, a Patreon mm -hmm. thing where people get to, um, they, I get to talk to everybody every day, and that I've got loads of. It's not just my grandpa's asking for requests now, <laughs> but every fucker asking for requests, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm being asked for, oh, it's such and such birthday, or it's such and such, like it's. I thought it was going to be a nightmare, but um, it keeps you busy and it keeps you focused, yeah. you know, and you can be honest with people because yeah. they've signed up for it, if they're tuned in, if they don't like it, they can just switch off. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I'd feel a bit more pressure if 
I had to invite people into a room. Seems a little bit more sinister. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, yeah. get their free will as well. So I don't know. So in a way, it's kind of, you've built up more of a connection because it's more of a kind of direct connection with fans. So yeah, yeah I guess that's the upside of all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Also at the minute, there's another band that I'm in called the Afro Cat Sound System. And they're actually performing on a Zoom as we speak uh, for a Knock and Gark festival that moved their festival online okay. as well. And one of the band members is in Guinea, Conakry in Africa so he's he it's amazing that you can tune in you can zoom with with Mfali and he's playing Cora mm -hmm. and in his village and his village is just happening behind him <laughs> you know, he's introducing you to all his family members and you know it's it's quite it's quite lovely like I'm feeling I'm, I'm feeling the love personally like the panic the dust has settled for me and I'm like right I'm in Let's go. <laughs> Yemi, what about for you? Are you finding that kind of direct connection with fans or is it kind of uh, a little bit uh, different? Oh, yeah, I definitely did. When I did those Sunday sessions, um, I was getting people coming in from like South America, people that I'm sure had never heard of me before, but because of the lockdown had seen me come up or someone else had shared it. A lot of my friends had shared it um, or followers, you know, I don't know. Um, and I was getting people, yeah, from all over the place. And that was amazing for me, actually. Um, reading through the comments after, because it's very strange when you're doing a live Facebook you get all these comments you can't really focus on them and then you look back and you're like wow that person's from here and people comment in French that is an amazing thing I think the collaboration factor the ability that we've now got we've got this kind of global stage kind of thing going on where you're now um, reaching out to people that you wouldn't have done before because you know you thought okay well why would I want to do music with them online I'll try and go to their country but because we can't now we're all on the same platform we can actually um branch out I think that's one of the best things I think so far I'm noticing um the opportunity to collaborate in that kind of um, yeah single global stage yeah. Got a bit of a captive audience as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Got nothing yeah. else to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha, just thinking about kind of streaming, you know, and and whether you think it's um, it's like a sustainable way of will it will it kind of continue beyond um lockdown, you know, and what do you think people will pay to watch gigs online now? Will that you know socially distanced gigs will that be the way forward? Um, I know it's a debate, but my honest opinion is no, I don't think they will. I think, you know, we cannot replicate the fact that it, people like being in a gig. People like, we cannot create the atmosphere online. You know, we can sit and we can enjoy the music, but that's 50% of it. You know, when people are in the warehouse projects, they like to be in a tight environment on the dance floor and really feel the energy, and you cannot recreate that. So I think as lockdown does uh, um, unlock, sorry, slowly starts to happen. And we do move more towards normality. I think, you know, people will, you know, gigs are the future. I, I can't see what we're doing now replacing actual gigs. I, I really can't. Michelle, what about for you in terms of, you know, planning a, a festival that may have to be socially distant? So, I mean, I've seen, is it Denmark, where they're already doing gigs, kind of people are watching in cars and, you know, in a, a huge car park and the stage is set up at the, you know, at the front and, you know, that's one way of doing it, I guess. But, um, I mean, how, how are you kind of getting around this or starting to think about getting around some of these major challenges? Uh, we're starting to think about everything, like also drive-in shows, uh, but mostly I think that the venues I work with a lot, uh, they are allowed to have shows for 30 people from June 1 onwards and 100 people from July 1st onwards, if they can have the social distance of one and a half meters around them, which is pretty much. Um, I also believe that people really want to have the live experience, but with this small numbers like 30 or 100, or less because many venues are not built for the one and a half meter distance and cannot fit in those people with, with those distances. So I think maybe until everything is back to normal, there will be those, everything will be in between. So there might be good registrations of the shows for very few people. And then that might be streamed to other people who couldn't get in, who were not the lucky one to be those 30 people. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe they can see it from home or maybe um, people want to go and see it in, in a cinema or so where they also can have 30 people and then they can see it together. Because I also believe that people would like to see something together more than they want to see it by themselves on a couch. 
Uh, I do hope so, though, that uh, after this lockdown, people will realize when they're seeing something on YouTube or wherever, that it's actually it's content that someone made, you know, that's, that's, that has been free for so long and everybody could go through it and thought, oh, it's just there. And that's now everybody realizes that, that there are out there a lot of musicians and a lot of artists who are without a job at the moment because they can't perform. So the content that they're watching is not just out there, but was made by someone so that they're more um, willing to, to pay something for it. Like with the, with, with the DJ thing that, that Sasha told, like for one euro or two euro or whatever. Uh, and also, I believe in a way that if people buy something, that they're more getting more into it than if everything is for free, that it's more if it's free, like you can join, you can leave, you know. I miss a little bit of the dedication that was there when people were really buying albums. So maybe it will, something of it will come back from this, but that I don't know. I also question it like Sasha does. I, I question how many in the audience will, will keep on doing it. Yeah, because it's that fear factor, isn't it? I mean, who actually does want to, you know, even if we, we just don't know where we're going to be, do we, where there's a second spike, you know, and obviously that's going to prolong things even further. And just for some people, the thought of going out and being, you know, around people is for some really anxiety inducing, I think, at the moment. So it's just, it's so hugely complex. Um, Richard, if I could just turn to you for a moment then, in terms of how Manchester might unlock its venues or, you know, operate socially distanced gigs. Do you have any uh, thoughts on what that might look like? Well, I was just uh, listening to Michelle then talking about uh, having audiences of 30 and thinking of a couple of gigs I've been to, particularly thinking of a couple of Gulliver's where they would have been delighted to have had 30 people actually. <laughs> but let's, let's, not, let's not go there. <laughs> uh, uh, really. um, uh, I, I think I'm with other people, particularly Sasha, is, is that um, uh, getting back to that live environment and, and the feeling that's really, really uh, uh, important. Although, before I move on to your qu question, uh, I think what we will be finding out of this crisis is that uh, there are lots and lots of artists will have learned to use the digital world in a very, very different way. Mm -hmm. And I think it's what Yemi was talking about, about building in audiences in places they maybe never imagined mm -hmm. they would have had an audience. So when you get back to performing, recording and so on, that actually it will uh, it increase their ability to perform and, and, and so on going forward. So there is always some learning out of uh, this. It doesn't matter now how crap it is, and it is pretty crap, um, that there will be learning and things that people will take away that will be positive uh, uh, things. Is that it, in terms of how we get back to uh, live performance within the city, I'll go to uh, some of the things I, I really said earlier, is that uh, we have to be able to demonstrate that the virus is under control, because if it's not, even if you open venues, uh, there will be lots and lots of people who don't want to go. So part of this is about confidence with people. Yeah, I can go out. It's, uh, it, it's, okay. Uh, it's okay. And that's probably the biggest uh, priority for us at the moment. And it might sound like a new form of mu uh, uh, music, but basically uh, test, track, trace, it isn't a new form of music, but that's what we have to do in order to be able to keep the uh, uh, vir virus un under control. And that's the prior priority over the next couple of months. I think, as I said previously then, uh, it will be, and I was interested that the example from uh, Denmark, sitting in cars. Mm -hmm. um, it's what I said earlier, outdoor, uh, spaced out. Um, there's nothing wrong with spaced out music, so that's okay. Um, uh, Possibly uh, sit down gigs going uh, going forward. I, I, look, I'm an old, old man. I can remember seeing Pink Floyd live in uh, Hyde Park uh, a very long time ago, and it was <laughs> lovely in that environment. So, uh, and, and it will be doing stuff like that that moves us back to getting into. Uh, I think what Sasha talked about, which is that very different experience. But ultimately, I think for live music, you have to get there. I'll tell you a story. Uh, it's a short one. Uh, my first ever live gig was Gino Washington and the Ram Jam Band. And if it had not been hot and sweaty, it would not have been half the gig. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, makes a gig to me uh, a lot of the time. Absolutely agree. Um, 
Uh, so this question is really for Yemi and Raina. So, you know, jazz especially relies on uh, kind of communal improvisation and, you know, obviously on touring and that idea of how, how are you, can you be creative with your fellow musicians in a lockdown situation? I mean, have you been or has that been more challenging or actually has it been more fruitful? Do you want to take this, Yemi? Um, wow. So I found I've noticed a massive trend in terms of my music uh, C sector echo chamber online is that there's a lot less um, complete creativity and more like recreativity. Loads of people doing covers because because essentially you do covers, you get more people engaged because they want to hear a song they know, and we know that. And I, I do covers music a lot. Um, it's you know most income so like parties and weddings and that so a lot of people are recreating versions of songs and they're doing that in that kind of split screen format and that is great um one thing one thing the hindrance in terms of creativity is that there's no way of um performing together in real time where the timing isn't out yeah. so even with my my band for my music like we've done a couple of bits we've sent like a little lick or riff that we like an idea but there's just no real way of making that all make sense together at the same time. And I think that one, that's one thing that's actually putting me off <laughs> trying to do too much. I'm just like, I can't, I need to hear you doing it in front of me so I can respond to that. And so is that, yeah, is that like the latency then? Is that what? Yeah, there just, there just isn't anything yet, which I'm sure will be coming very soon, but that allows it to really work smoothly. And I don't know if it will ever be the same to do it in that way anywhere. I think in that case, just do, do other things. Know, that we, we can't come together unfortunately um it, it has to be done in person i think yeah quite yourself um, well in in the same way there's been a lot of collaborative work come through there's a lot of um patronage where someone's given us kind of a budget to kind of work with and make music together and in that way you know, you're sent a beat and then you'll improvise over that and you can then you pass it along the line and then whatever comes out at the end, it's sort of like a Chinese whispers. It's really it's really funny because sometimes it's awful. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you can't if someone's doing something that you don't like live on stage, you can throw them a bit of a snarl. Well I can or I can wave my foot at them and know that or I can slow someone down that's speeding up or if someone's having too good a time, I can usually make the face that'll do that. Whereas now I think my band members are probably breathing awesome sighs of relief because they're at a swinging distance. <laughs> so um, they're probably a lot happier than I am about the, the improvisational thing. A lot of them are get, getting the solos that they wanted. Uh, in this collaborative setup that they wouldn't have been allowed previously. Um, yeah, that's kind of, yeah, I'm a bit of a fantasist, I suppose, but uh, yeah, I have had a really good idea for it. Um, we have, we do have access to a studio where we could just make massive baffles. There are massive baffles, so um, soundproofing. Oh, yeah. So we would be able to be a big massive circle but then you'd only be able to see the person straight across from you in the circle. Mm -hmm. And at least you'd be able to tune in. Like even when you're in the studio, you sort of are separated. And then, so the, we have mm -hmm. tried a couple of things. We're just kind of written around. Yeah. Off the pegs, trying to make it work. But uh, you can do, I think jazz will out. It will like that improvisational spirit lived online anyway um when we were passing things digitally to each other it's just that the smell and the body language and the fear <laughs> of the live i think like the fear of life is what i miss yeah. and um, reading an audience and reading the emotion of a room um or you know um Mm. I shows that someone's speaking too loud. I even miss that. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> it is selfishly, you know, don't get to be as indulgent. Yeah, that that's, that's a lesson in, 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 in just being grateful for it when this is over. And I think, you know, the joy and elation, people just 
running into a field, nearly wanting to get buck naked in it, rolling around at a festival. What's going to happen? You know, and I really, really appreciate my sound engineers. Oh, because uh, living with my sound engineers has been torturous. So, yeah. Yeah. Is that, I forgot what the question was. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a, qu a couple of questions here. The first question is from Anna. Uh, are socially distant gigs really possible? Hmm. That is the question. Who wants to uh, have a go at that one? Well, I think uh, from what I've seen in other countries in Europe, the answer to that is yes. You know, we, we spoke before, I've seen uh, gigs where people turned up in cars in, in Germany and basically had a rave in the car. Um, it, it, it is possible. It, it's not going to be the same. It really isn't. Um, you know, you do need to be shoulder to shoulder to create the actual atmosphere. Um, but yeah, I think social distance gigs are going to be possible. Yeah. Can, can I, I mean, of course. The, not only do I think they're probably like such not possible, I don't think they're desirable either. Uh, yeah. the, I mean, the, the, the whole nature of socially being socially distanced, uh, it ought to be alien to us. Uh, that we spend a lot of time trying to bring people together, not keep them apart. Music is one of the things that brings people together. And um, actually what we need to do is to get back to that place where music brings people together, uh, not just with the experience, but the, the, the physical element of it as well. I, I, for me, it's one of those things that's crucial to life, really. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Does anybody else want to comment on that one? In that case, let's move on from uh, Magnus in Wolverstow. Which musician, alive or dead, would you most want to be locked down with? I'll answer first, Prince, and uh, I'll let everybody else go. <laughs> Asha. Well, I mean, I'm also a huge Prince fan, and without wanting to cause offence to, to, to Richard, the only time I dragged myself into the main road was to actually see Prince. And being a, a youth, and that was very hard to do. Um, but if if I had to be locked down with somebody, it would most definitely be David Bowie. Mm, yeah. All right. <laughs> the Prince, obviously. Yeah, me. Um, I would just say Annie Winehouse because um, I didn't get to see her live when she was alive. And I honestly, it's, well, it's not a regret because obviously I couldn't have any control over it. But God, she'd be amazing. She'd be able to tell amazing stories. We could write songs together. I mean, Amy would have a good time, I'm sure. Yeah, I saw her at Academy 3, I think it was when Frank came out. Oh my gosh, it was an amazing gig, really incredible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ryan, what about you? Billy Holiday. <gasps> yeah. Michelle? I never can only mention one. I think all the ones I would like to be locked down with are also very diff difficult personalities, I think. Charlie Mingus would be one, and Aretha Franklin, and Prince. So, there are many of them I would like to be locked down with. Yeah, but I'm yeah. not so sure they want to be locked down with me. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, so Richard? <laughs> okay, well, uh, if they were just going to sing to me, then I'd probably, I'm going to go for Ella Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's just to sing to me. Uh, I, I think if it was somebody to talk to, um, there's kind of got a contradiction here. I'll probably go for, uh, for Bob Dylan. I'm not sure he would ever say anything, so there's a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, so he wouldn't want to look at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he'd just spend the time trying to, you know, sneak his cats <laughs> to, yeah. into the hotel rooms. You heard yeah. that? Oh, here we go. We have a, another couple of, oh, they're coming in thick and fast now. So we have uh, Mel in Whitley Bay asks, uh, what can we do to make sure that the increasing mental health concerns of artists during this time doesn't pre prevent their return to a music career? A really important question. Sorry, can you repeat the question one more? Yeah. So what can we do to make sure that the increasing mental health concerns of artists during this time doesn't prevent their return to a music career? Can I just say, I'll, I'll say a little bit. Oh, sorry, go on, Yemi. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. Uh, uh, a, a general thing is that uh, there is an acceleration problems with 
mental health coming out of lockdown. It's impacts on younger people rather uh, more than uh, older people. Uh, clearly, uh, artists are more likely to be younger than older. Uh, what we have been doing, certainly in Greater Manchester, is putting a whole range of stuff, uh, largely obviously digital uh, stuff, in order to be able to make sure people can access uh, support. And all of that's on uh, very Greater Manchester website. So there is stuff there. Uh, if you're feeling you've got problems, please, please don't just sit there, uh, make, make contact, get help. And that's there's a real big message for everybody. There is help out there. If you need it, get it. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, do you want to? Um... I mean, I was just going to say there's an audience or a person who's watching and um, who's a fan of someone, just continue to tell them you, you think they're good, comment on their stuff, follow what they're doing, um, just give them a thumbs up. Really, I think you know, we underestimate, even though it's not the be all and end all. Um, positive comments and, and things like that really do make um, the artists feel good about themselves. And does anyone you're worried about you haven't heard about them, DM them and say, hi, I'm really missing your music, blah, blah, because, yeah, we don't know, not everyone speaks out about things and it would be interesting to lose any anyone on the stage because of this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, the next question we have is, uh, Dino, when do you think Manchester will start, start seeing their gigs again, small or large? I guess that's one for Sasha or Richard. Well, I'll let Richard to the lead on that. <laughs> I'm going to let Sasha take that. <laughs> Look, I, I think uh, really we just don't uh, we we don't know. Um, uh, I hope sooner rather than uh, uh, late later. But I think I go back to is that we have to be able to demonstrate the virus is under control. It doesn't mean it's been eliminated. Uh, it's on, under control that we can start to, be able to operate uh, normally. I don't know how long that will uh, uh, take. So, really, I hope soon, sooner the better. By I, mm. I think if, if I was just to add to that, uh, to back it up, you know, Manchester is extremely resilient. Music's in our DNA. You know, Sir Richard and the council have allowed me to put parties on in. in uh, empty breweries, um, air raid shelters, currently housed uh, disused railway station, Mayfield. Uh, and they've always been extremely supportive of the arts, of the music, uh, culture. So I think whenever it happens, we will be the first to ask the chaps. And, you know, we do think differently uh, in the city region and support each other differently. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Raylan, were you going to come in on that one? Um, well, I'd be very apprehensive to be part of anything that brings people together prematurely because you do fear you've got a responsibility there and a lot of the first gigs that I know that a couple of my friends did um, they lost a lot of money on them um, but they couldn't in good conscience go on stage and I suppose um, <clears throat> yeah it's, it's hard I, I don't envy your position Sasha you know but it is there's a responsibility there and we're all scraping our hoofs to get back out on the road but you know um yeah there's like my mother is still locked away in eastern europe she hasn't been able to get on a plane yet i haven't seen her and you know like family scattered all over the world and nobody can get home and you know there's some people that are but the like the last festival did anybody see that there's people like in in and in, 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 um on the other side of the of the world, in South America, at a, at a festival that you know that ended months ago, and they can't get home. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, oh. I was at first. I was like, amazing, awesome, and then I was like, actually, no, yeah. terrible, <laughs> awful. <laughs> you know, I just I don't think I could cope with that. Uh, the guilt of if anybody got sick because of mm. me yeah. wanting to, you know, get get out there. And my word. So I think I wouldn't actually agree with the sooner rather than later. I like, no, you know, you take your time. And yeah. I'm, you know, we've got enough to contend with with Catholic guilt. <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's like, will anyone want to go to a gig? You know, we just you don't. Yeah, uh, yeah. We it's so hard to gauge, isn't it? I'd like to think that you know we'll be out there, but who knows? Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got a question from Michelle from Wigan. 
is asking, is now a good time to start a band? Can you repeat it because I didn't hear it? <laughs> it was a question saying, is now a good time to start a band? Well, uh, well you, I guess you're you a lot of time, time to practice time. and bring a band together. <laughs> So yes, maybe yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I, I think a lot of people can, uh, if you're auditioning for a band, people are like playing, but then they're tweaking and they're auto-tuning what they're doing. And you don't know what you're going to get online. Do you mean, they might pretend that they play, then you meet them in real life and they're a, f a funny. So, no, need to know you've got a vibe with them as well before you, before you go committing. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, we have a question in from Toby and Eaton Moore. Which song has meant the most to you over the last two months? It's a great question. Ooh. Which question? Which song has meant the most to you over the last two months? Ooh. I did see a rendition of Sam Cook, The Change Gone Come, which definitely triggered a little twinkle in my eye. Um, yeah, Sam Cook's change gonna come because that's just change is gonna come. Things will get better, you know. Um, that's definitely one I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Sasha, do you know I, I can't choose one. The one song that's been stuck in my head today uh, is simply because last night on United Dream we had the um, anniversary. Third, third anniversary of the arena attack and, and all day today I've been singing Don't Look Back in Anger uh, in my head at the moment um, you know it's clearly a big Manchester track yeah Survivor's Choir was amazing really be beautiful yeah. One. yeah Raina what about you what songs meant the most to you um, there's I've had to sing some really uh, heartbreakers to oh. mother and parents all our favourite ones and um, family members. There's a lot of anniversaries, so you're singing for people that have passed away and things like that. There's been a lot of that. But one really joyous one was a cover for um, a band member's dad. Um, band, band member is Larian, and his, his dad's in San Francisco on his own. And he's um, this lovely old Nicaraguan guy, and he loves. Um, what they call the country boy, but it's that song, um, I'm so lonesome I could cry. Yeah. So we we recorded that, we gave him a shout out and sang it to him on the, on the live stream, and oh. um, it was really cute. Oh. It was lovely because we then zoomed with him afterwards. And, oh. Oh. Yeah, good vibes, but it is a heartbreaker of a song, but it was like a mountain. You know, good vibes, so. yeah. Richard, Michelle, what about you? What songs meant the most to you? Uh, I, I do get songs stuck in my head uh, occasionally. And um, very sadly, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I probably watched about eight different versions of uh, I Can't Find My Way Home, uh, Stevie Winwood and uh, Eric oh. Lapton. The best version is the one where he wears an orange shirt. I think it's live at Madison Square, uh, Square, Square Garden. Uh, it, I haven't a clue what the song is about either, um, but it's just a really, really lovely song. And it gets get stuck in my head. And if I ever want to feel better, it's something I'll go and listen to. Oh, nice. And what about you, Michelle? I listen to a lot of new music, so and a lot of it is jazz, which is instrumental. So it's not so much songs. It's uh, I listen to a lot of uh, of Aramark's Casa Overall, Rindon, Baka Hutchins, and there's one singer that I can listen again and again, actually there are two, it's Britton Howard and Billie Eilish, I can oh, yeah. listen to this lead right now. Yeah. Great, thank you. Britton Howard and Billie Eilish, together? No, no, sorry. One Margin! <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, actually, Shabaka... Uh, I've got tickets to comments coming, which will be the third time I see them, if they are able to perform oh. uh, later this year. I saw them at Yes earlier in the year, and they're absolutely fantastic. I've seen the band on the wall, so I'd love to be able to see that. In terms of, new, I have been listening to some new, uh, new music, but they, uh, I guess the one is top of my list of new music, which I play now over and over and over again, mm. is uh, Fiona Apple. Oh, that's, uh, oh, yeah. It's my lockdown album. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. 
100% with you there. Okay, we've got a question now from Liz in Broadbottom saying, will there be any funding left after the pandemic passes? Gosh. <laughs> 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 I think funding is very much needed for a long, long time to come. So I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, I have strong thoughts on this. So, you know, our sector, hospitality, leisure sector, we were the first ones who were forced to close. We are probably going to be the last ones to fully open. Um, so the government have to support us to the very end. If they turn around, they're floating this idea of the 4th of July for some bars, if you can prove social distancing or restaurants. If you can open at 50% capacity, you'd be making a lot in most circumstances, especially with restaurants that the profit margins are between 8 and 12%. So it doesn't work. So if we are to open, they have to support us. If you open at 50% capacity, maybe we agree 50% furlough. I think they should be looking at just like no VAT on food and alcohol. And so there's so, so many things they can do to help and, and they must support us. But otherwise, it could decimate the industry. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, that thought is just too, yeah, terrifying to comprehend. I think, but um, yeah, something has to um, happen soon. Yeah, it has to. Yeah. I'm interested to know also from from Sasha because I don't know exactly the situation in England. I know for the venue owners or the people who have halls that in Holland, with the restrictions we have, they are going back to 25% of their regular capacity. Is that the same in England with the, the, the one and a half meter distance? The, well, the, the honest answer is we don't know. Um, you know, we were quite excited last week. There was a 50 page document that came out from the government and I flicked through it straight away towards the hospitality leisure sector and it didn't tell us anything that we didn't already know. Um, so they need to give more guidance and support. Because in Holland, they are already making calculations based on the one and a half meter distance. There are some things about what could be possible. And most venues cut to 25%, maybe 30. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with uh, what Sasha said. I, I think it's absolutely vital that we do get that uh, government support. Uh, we do have a, a sort of working group led by Dave Mutri from Hope about uh, how we sustain and maintain the. Uh, the whole of the cultural sector in, uh, uh, in, in Manchester will do what we will. But uh, I think if you want to go from almost the most pessimistic point of view and then look at it optimistically, people are never going to stop making music. They're never going to stop performing uh, uh, music. Uh, and that, that actually does, it's one of those things that gives, gives me some grounds for hope, really, knowing that that's going to happen. And also the creativity of promoters maybe because I know in Holland the people who are able to open to 30 or maybe later on to 100 they're thinking in more than one set so first they had like everybody in for one or maybe two sets same audience now I think maybe it's two or three times three different audiences to see how at least more people can see a show with the same audience yeah yeah Okay, we have another question just coming before we finish. This is Sharma in South Manchester says, and this is for you, Sasha, I think. Yeah. Um, could platforms like United We Stream continue, but with live audiences? Um, so I'll tell you what the plan actually with United We Stream uh, was originally. It was to, to finish when uh, lockdown was finished. But actually, we've changed our minds. And as a promoter myself, Warehouse Projects and Par Life, I know it, there's so much hidden talent across the whole of Greater Manchester. And to become you know, a known DJ or a band with some success, you, you kind of need a little bit of luck. So we're going to leave it there as a platform for talent to, to um, upload themselves. Um, and also, we've been given a um, purpose-built recording studio for two years by Allied London, completely for charge. So if that's what you're going to be king, we'd never have been able to dream of you know, affording rent for a recording studio. We're going to be able to go through those doors and again upload, upload onto United We Stream. So I think it's going to be it's a, a legacy that's left behind. Um, yeah. We'll quite that. yeah, that's fantastic news. Brilliant, it really is. Okay, we've got two questions then before we uh, end. A question from Helen Melodieu. Are young audiences, sorry, are young artists rather, uh, going to be affected the most by lockdown? 
who wants to uh, tackle that one? Um, I think uh, young, young artists, if you, uh, young artists, um, I think what's most worrying about the last five minutes discussion is, is you know, you're, you can keep your creativity at whatever level you can, but once lockdown has started to disperse, they need some, the venues need to be there. And a lot of the small venues are closing down. A lot of the um, sort of just community buildings, if, if they don't have Arts Council funding, if they don't have lottery funding, if they don't have those funds, if they're just going to close everywhere. And um, people starting out do need the smaller venues. Mm. Uh, so that's basically, yeah, I'm worried about that. I'm worried about... Um, young people I work with and young people that I teach yeah. having somewhere just to get up and you know their words and there's a massive community there in every city that we go to that is um kind of cultivated around an independent scene and all of them aren't publicly funded mm -hmm. so everybody's on the bones of the past there so like I'm not worried about us because we can keep on um creating but it's to have the having space there yeah. and i don't have a lot of faith they, uh, <laughs> uh, this is a, a kind of uh i don't know if i'm on or not yeah I'm yes, on there. Uh, uh, a general thing uh, young people are going to be affected all the evidence we have is that young people are going to be affected the most by uh, uh, COVID-19 by uh, by lockdown, so and that that will include musicians within that. That, that ought to be a concern. And again, we need to think about how we deal with that, how we support young people, how we are able to make sure that they're doing the opportunities that uh, that they need to have. It's uh, it's a difficult question. I've just also seen as well we we'll wouldn't be allowed to break curfew apparently, which is uh, always good news, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> What do you mean? Oh, uh, you've just had a message, Kirsty. Yes, I've got, seen it. Got till five past. <laughs> I've seen it, yeah. You can break curfew. <laughs> yes, that's why we've added, they've given me a, a final question. But I just wondered, Michelle, if you had any points on, uh, to note on young artists being affected the most? Um, yes, because they're missing out there, they may be ready to make them shut shown to the world mm -hmm. and there's no place where where to show it right now so yes that's that's they're immediately starting with the with the distance not only the one and a half meter distance but there is this distance to to go out there i think a lot of festivals they they may attract uh, an audience on the, on the bigger names but most of the festivals also have uh, stages where they show younger talents all those things are not happening right now so yes they're it's a, it's a difficult time if you just recorded your first records, then where are you going to go right now? Yeah. Um, I just wondered if any of you have seen any uh, lockdown gigs or, you know, live stream gigs that you've been really impressed by, you know, kind of stuff that you've watched or that's been really um, uh, impressive to you. Oh, I definitely um, really enjoyed, only because it was last week, uh, Martin Connor's live band, um, he did Matt and Fred's live stream and they did it in his yard. They had these like little festoon fairy lights and things and they were all like very far apart from each other and um, it was lovely, it was gorgeous. The sun was setting, um, you could see it got from light to dark during the gig and the engagement was amazing and it sounded really good and I guess that speaks volumes about Martin Connor and his band, but it was just, I put it on my big screen, HDMI, here, and I really felt like, you know, I was clapping everything. <laughs> I, was, I really felt, yeah, it was amazing. So, yeah, fair play to Matt and Rose and what they've been doing. Yeah, yeah great. Thanks. Anyone else? I've been tuning in every Saturday night religiously to a magazine show was put together by an arts centre at Belfast called The Dollarn. Basically, got everybody who formed their 111 artists and everybody sat in a little clip and then it was pieced together with introductions and and uh, you got to see everybody's living room and everybody's meet everybody's children and uh, you got to sing with my, the baby on my knee and 
was really it was really lovely and um it's been going for six weeks now and um that was just on a donation basis mm. but it was really it was really nice and everybody shared everything and mm. there's there's a gun foot series the front room festival that's coming on monday that i'm that i'm gonna be a part of as well and that's been massive fundraising for help musicians as well and a lot of charity work mm. um, so yeah there's I'm at the, I'm delighted. There's loads of there's loads of really good music going out there. You yeah. almost saturated because you want to see everybody's gigs. There's literally so much, isn't there? You kind of watch there. It's really it's great. I'm really I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, great. Richard, what about yourself? Uh, I'm not a fan of. I really have to say, I'm not a fan of online gigs. It's just like for me, it's just like watching TV. Yeah. Uh, uh, really, it's, uh, it goes back to I think it's uh, something I things I've said. Sasha said is that uh, for me, part of the experience is about being there. The noise is different, the sound is different, the feel is uh, feel is different. The music can be great, but you you don't have the whole experience. Although I have to say, what Yemi described is really nice. I really <laughs> like that. <laughs> Sasha, Michelle, any favourite gigs for you so far? I think probably a standout for me um, during the United We Stream was there was a festival that was supposed to happen um, using quite a few venues in Manchester City Centre called Headstock Festival and that promoted uh, mental health and well-being and obviously it couldn't take place so they approached us and said look can we do something together with collaboration and last Monday was the first day of Mental Health Awareness Week um, and by absolute coincidence it was also the 40th anniversary of Ian Curtis taking his own life um, so we had uh, a Q&A with New Order. Um, the Killers, um, amazingly, did um, a few tributes for Joy Division, as did Elbow and the Lottery winners. And that, that was a really special night. It was a special moment. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, I really enjoyed watching it. Michelle, what about you? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit old school as well. I prefer to hear music on, on, a, on a hi fi system and be sure that the sound is well. Yeah. Um, so I, I prefer a CD and well, digital music when I know that I can stream it well on hi-fi. Yeah. Uh, I did see something, of course, I, I thought Sting and The Roots did something together that I liked because you could see everybody from their own home. And But I'm not always that Im impressed by things online. I, I like it. I, I, I love to see the tiny desk performances, but they also exist when it's not lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've got special things that I watch and I'm looking, out, looking to watch, but, but I'm not checking everything online because I like to see it live better. I really like to see yeah. it live. I totally understand that. And lastly then, um, random question, what's your least favorite jazz instrument and why? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, totally none. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I think a couple of years ago, Courtney Pine made a, a, a CD, which I think was sort of played almost entirely on I think it's a baritone saxophone. I really did not like it. Uh, <laughs> love a bit of baritone. A bit of bass, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm the opposite end of the saxophone spectrum. I am nay into uh, the soprano sax. No. Too high. Mm. Nay into it. I would agree with that, actually. I, I found it difficult to even think about talking about a, an instrument badly but yeah bit, bit too high that soprano it has its uses yeah. i think anything that 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 messes with my frequency i've got a problem with <laughs> no. get off my land uh -huh. <laughs> um i'm not sure what my least favorite jazz instrument is i have to think on that one michelle have you got one yes the iwi the electronic saxophone i think that's horrible uh, <laughs> but I think most instruments, you know, I would say flute is something that I might not like because it's high and it sounds so so small. Mm. But then I got this record from Jamie Baum, which is so so beautiful. So I like to get impressed by records by instruments that I think I don't like, and I think it's a real challenge if something someone makes a real beautiful record out of it. And I think it's possible maybe with every every instrument. Yeah. But the iwi, I really doubt it. Wooden, wooden flutes are better. 
Well, uh, on, on the flute, I'm going to go for uh, some fantastic music from Roman Kirk a, long, uh, a while ago, played on a flute and uh, jazz and really, really good. So uh, I, I think the flute's okay. All right, now, I thought you were going to play that for us then. No. no, no. Oh. <laughs> such a <laughs> Least favourite instrument. <laughs> Yeah. What about you, Sasha? Do you know what? It's not because of the instrument itself, but I would have to pick on the flute, and it's purely because of my music teacher at school. Uh, it was a bit of a bully, Mr. Simpson. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, um, fair enough. Yeah. 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 <laughs> fair enough. But please listen to Jamie Baum on flute. It's really beautiful. And I'm not a, I'm not a fan of the flute too, but she plays it really, really beautifully. We will do now. Thank you for the recommendation. Okay, everyone, I think it's we're pretty much out of time. Uh, all that remains is for me to say a massive thank you to all of you for a really fascinating discussion for the last hour, and thank you for being with us. Uh, we, uh, me, and the rest of the jazz team, really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.